How is a gap analysis done? What are the key steps required to carry this out effectively? First, a best practice is selected against which the organization wants to establish its current level of maturity. Best practices such as ISO 55000 for asset management and ISO 31000 for risk management. The gaps are typically calculated by individual departments and then averaged up to the corporate level. In a workshop setting, a series of questions are presented to a cross-section of internal stakeholders. For each question, they rate their department's performance relative to a selected best practice. Based upon a five-point scale of predefined maturity descriptors, the stakeholders each provide an opinion of a score on the rating scale. The average score is used to determine the maturity rating for the question being considered. In some cases, opinions can vary and the individual scores will range widely across the five point scale. Although not a consensus, an average is calculated and used. While keeping best practice standards in mind, stakeholder engagement is an essential part of conducting any gap analysis. Maturity ratings can be gathered in different ways. In addition to real-time in-person workshops or meetings, data can be obtained through real-time virtual meetings using polling software or via asynchronous remote polling. Regardless of the polling method used, stakeholders are presented with several questions. These serve to uncover any gaps relative to best practice or, alternatively, relative to the organization's target. The questions are scored on the same one to five scale. Next in the gap analysis, the scores for each question are plotted on a radar chart. This provides a means to see all scores together in a single view. By linking the scores across the radar diagram, the gap profile appears. The shape of the profile may vary by department or the shape might, may vary at different points in time. The size of each gap is estimated based on the variance between the current score relative to the organization's target score. This collection of gaps reveals the overall gap profile. Weightings can be applied to the scores if required. The weighted profile assists in prioritizing the initiatives that will be developed to close each gap. The gap analysis culminates in an overall organization score, which is derived from the individual department scores, and these in turn are derived from the many attribute scores measured against the best practices. In order to close the opportunity gaps, a roadmap of prioritized improvement initiatives is required. And the gap analysis has now provided the organization with the contours of the journey ahead.